Today we are doing the lunch bag by Also Petite. Um, I have, as usual, altered the pattern. Um, I did. I did not do a lot of hand stitching in this bag. Uh, but other than that, I've pretty much kept to the pattern. It's super cute. I've used waterproof lining or canvas as the lining. Um, and then the outside fabric is a drill. And then I talk about all the interfacings and stuff I use. So if you'd like to see how I've made this, stay tuned. Alrighty guys, let's get started. So first I want to talk interfacing. Instead of doing half and half straps, I have done um, four times the width and then folded it in half and then in half again. And because this is a drill fabric that I'm using, um, it's quite thick, so I didn't put any interfacing on the straps. However, on the rest of the outside of the pieces, because I want this bag to stand up completely by itself, I have put the extra heavy non-woven fusible, and then also I have this Insul Bright. Uh, you can get this from Spotlight, but basically if you look really closely, you can see kind of metal through it. So it's got a it's got a layer of metal in between the foam, so it helps to insulate the bag. So this is going to help make anything you put in there hot stay hot, or anything you put in cold to stay cold. It's obviously not foolproof, but it definitely helps. So on the outside pieces, I have put the Insul Bright on all of them. So that's the bottom, and then that one's the top. So I've got all of that, and then for my lining, I am using my waterproof canvas so that it can be wiped clean if you spill anything in it. So anyway, that's what I've done there. I'm going to start with the handles, and I'm just going to top stitch down each side one eighth of an inch. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the ends because they get put into a seam. So you're not going to see them, so I don't have to trim them down. I am still going to backstitch though, because I backstitch everything. And apparently none of that was sewing. Fantastic. I definitely have thread, it's just... I don't know what its problem is. Sometimes if I backstitch too quickly on this machine, it doesn't love it and snaps a thread. Because I did get the first few th stitches in. So if you have issues with backstitching, what you can do is you can stitch a couple stitches and then just lift it up and go back into the first hole. It's like the equivalent of backstitching without actually doing it. Then I'm just going to flip around and come to the other side and do the same thing. Now if you've got um, half and half handles, I would just double sided tape them together. Excuse me. Alright, then I'm going to chain stitch the next one so that I'm not wasting thread. We all know I love to chain stitch. And I've chosen yellow thread on this just because I thought it might be a little bit more fun. Since the fabric I've picked is actually quite whimsical, I just thought bright yellow thread might be, you know, something fun. And it's the same colour as the pineapples. Alright, so that is now the handles stitched. I have done my handles a lot shorter than the pattern suggests, uh, but that's just my personal choice. So then we're going to put the handles, so this is one of the side pieces, so I'm going to put the handles in like this, and you just want to take a tape measure and measure to make sure that they're even. I don't know why I grabbed a pen. I should have grabbed uh, Wonder Clips. I'm going to put it right there. Put 
and then come this side. So I'm going to straighten this out and then twist it around like that to ensure that I don't have any actual twists in the fabric. And then place my handle. My handle's are half the size of theirs, but I'm starting to think that that might have been a mistake, but that's okay. Worst case scenario is I unpick it later. Um, I just wanted to see what it would look like with shorter handles, so I'm doing it. And I'm putting two clips on these to hold them in place because... One has the ability to kind of swivel and then go out of place, and I don't like that. All right. That there, like so. So now if you want, you can base these in place, but what I'm going to do is just take my main panel and put them right sides together and stitch it together. <laughs> So I'm going back to adjoining stitch length, uh, which for me is two and a half, but everybody's machine is different. And I'm going slowly because there's actually metal in between this. I know it's only aluminium foil or whatever it is. Aluminum, aluminium, wherever you're from, however you pronounce it. Uh, but I don't want to go full speed and potentially snap a needle. I just, it's, I don't feel like doing that today. So slow and steady wins the race. I know I say that a lot, but it's true. Okay, so that's one in, and now I have a handle. So now I'm going to put the other one on. So we put right sides together, and if you want to, you can pin this in place. Um, no harm in some extra wonder clips, or even you can take these clips and just reposition them to grab all of everything. That would work too, like so. So now I can, you know, it's all joined as one. And then back stitch. So now we've got this. So I'm going to pop this aside. And we're going to take our front piece. Uh, so I've bought, because the front and the back are slightly different sizes, I've bought both the pieces here just to make sure. So this one's the front. So what we want is we want some zipper tape. Now I'm thinking maybe red or yellow. Maybe we'll do yellow because I'm doing yellow stitching. That would be fun. I quite often don't um, have a plan of what what stuff I'm going to use until I'm on camera. Because um, I just, I don't know. I like to side spare of the moment, I guess. So I'm just going to chop off. I'm going to chop off a little bit extra to what I think I need. And by little bit, I mean like half an inch, just in case I'm wrong. It has been known to happen. It happened um, yesterday, actually, with my elastic. Okay, so, wind that back up. And so now we're going to take our main panel and put the zip right side down. And I'm just going to stitch close to the edge to tack it on because I still need to attach the... Um, the lining piece, but by doing it this way, I can just tack it in place and then I can do a closer stitch, like closer to the zipper teeth, once I get the lining piece on so that we're not going to see any of my stitches and I don't have to be super worried about um, making them hidden. So I'm just stitching close to the edge. You'll notice I haven't pinned my zip. I'm a little bit more organic, so I like to twist it as I go. I did cut too much, but that's okay. I did anticipate that. So now that I've got my zip on like this, we want to take the lining piece, which is this one, 
and I'm going to join the center of this to the center. I'm just going to do a little clip to the center of this. Now I'm not even going to clip this. I just need to know where the center is. So with my pen outside of the stitching, I'm just going to draw a small mark. Uh, so my stitching's there and then that is above it. So we're not going to see that pen, but it's just so that I'm not clipping into the zip because where possible, I don't like to clip zips. Makes them fray and carry on. So now we're gonna take some Wonder Clips and just move along and clip it all down, really. Now you're gonna find that you're gonna want more clips on the edges and around the curves than the straights. And then I can just add one there because it's slightly bubbling there and the bottom. And then I'm going to come back and go in the other what direction. So I'm always starting from the middle and working my way down because on the off chance that you've cut anything too big or too small, it will be at the bottom where you can just trim it even. So it's less noticeable down there. Not that they should be cut uneven, by the way, but just if you were in a hurry that day or you weren't concentrating or whatever, you can fix that error without having to cut a new piece. We just trim it down. Okay, so that is my clips. You'll notice that there's a lot more in the curves, but that's to hold the zip down while we stitch it. So again, I'm going to now butt the edge of this foot up against the zipper so that this line will be slightly closer to the zip than the last one, so we're not going to see the other stitching. And I'm just going to go slowly because I want to pull the clips off right as I get to them, and I also want to make sure when I get to these corners that I'm not stitching over the actual zipper tape. I just want to do the edges. And then I'm also going to clean up my clips as I go because it's easy to sew in a cleaner workspace. And by having lining side up, you can also, you can see very clearly where the zipper tape is. And I'm helping by using my fingers. Trim off all of my tails. And so now it's enclosed like this. So now we can turn it through. You may want to clip these edges. Um, in a perfect world, you've got pinking shears or zigzag scissors. Although mine are pretty blunt, so I don't know how successful I'm going to be. And I'm just clipping outside of the stitching. And while that doesn't look like I've taken off a lot, because it's the zigzag shape, uh, it should turn the corners a lot nicer. So I'm just going to stick my hand in and push these out. And then we're going to top stitch around the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on the zip to make sure that both sides are very, very flat. And then I'm just going to top stitch. So for my top stitching, I'm cranking my stitch length up to three and three quarters. Um, I just like my top stitching to be slightly more decorative. That's my personal preference. And I'm doing one eighth of an inch from the seam. And I'm also pulling on the lining to make sure that it's sitting flush with the outside. And then just to make things easier, I'm also going to baste along the bottom. So I'm going to stitch across the bottom to make sure that it is now one piece. Like that. Ta-da! Okay. 
So now I want to find the center of this. So I'm going to fold this in half and grab some scissors. It doesn't matter which side, whatever side you want to be the front where the zip's going to go, basically. So that is now my center there. I'm going to trim off this excess zip here. And then I'm actually going to just pull this off. It is going to be much, much easier to attach with it off. I'm going to fold it in half and find the center. And then that center is going to go where the center clip is, uh, with the zip facing down. And then theoretically, this should quite easily just go straight across. Um, I probably don't really need to be clipping this, but I'm going to. So your zip should go from end to end of this edge. But we're doing it right sides down. Like that. And then you can either base this down and then add this piece. Oh. But I think I'm going to do it all at once. So I'm going to take this piece and take my side pieces and stitch them together like we did the outside. Back stitch. Move the scissors so that I don't fall. Back stitch. So then I want to do this side as well, but I'm going to chain stitch it. So I'm just going to squish it up so I can get to this edge. And then open that like so. And then back stitch. So now this piece should be the same size as your outer piece. Trim off your tails so they're not in the way. So I'm going to add this piece into the clips and I want to make sure that those seams match. Uh, I'm actually going to open this out flat to make it a flatter seam because of the um, initial bright. Now, initial bright um, doesn't come with in like a fusible form to my knowledge. It might where you live, I'm not sure. Uh, so I just used basting spray to spray it, like just baste it on. So like a temporary spray adhesive used for quilts to spray it on there. I possibly should have done a cutting prepping video for this. Um, so sorry about that. Okay, so now that I've clipped that, I'm going to stitch everything together. So again, I'm going to butt my needle up against the edge of the zipper. And if you want to get closer, you could just put a zipper foot on. And I also want to make sure I don't run out of bobbin thread. Backstitch. Always backstitch. And I'm going to top stitch that down um, because I want that to sit nice and flat. And I like top stitching and I top stitch the other side. And I like yellow, so I want to be able to see it a little bit. Stitch a few, back stitch. Now this part here is going to be a little bit bulky. Um, so if you're concerned about your machine going over it, you could actually clip um, out some of that bulk. So you cut it at a V shape to make it less bulky, but it's not too bad for me. So I have obviously left it in. Um, but if you wanted to, you would just come in. I'll show you on this side, just so that you know. Um, so here, we just want to cut in and out in kind of like a V shape. And that takes out the bulk. 
so when you're top stitching it will be flatter for you but again if you're on an industrial machine you don't need to do that on this particular bag but depending on your domestic you may want to do that because it just sits that little bit flatter If you if you're worried about your top stitching, you don't have to do it. I just think that that's going to make that sit a lot nicer. All right, on to the other side. So we're going to take our back piece and fold it in half and find the center. And then I'm going to fold this piece in half and also find the center. like so and then we're going to join those together with lots of clips so I'm always working from the center outwards I've got right sides together um, it's got lots of inchal bright going on so now that I'm at the corners I can come to the bottom. Now I join this differently when it's got a zip because the zip makes a difference. Also, this here, again, if you're on a domestic machine, trim that down so that it's smoother and flatter for that seam as you've got a lot of inch bright in it. I'm gonna come to the other side as well. Join the bottom, work your way up to the corner. Again, if you want to, trim that out. Then I'm just clipping up to the corner. Now, outside of your clips, you're going to find that there's a few bubbles. But so long as it's not within your clips, we have no problem. So, to get this to fit into here, you want to grab the corner and maneuver it so that it's going to curve around. And then we're going to add a clip. So again, we want to hold it like the 3D object that it is. Sometimes it likes to fight you. You want to hold it as a 3D object so that you can get around that curve. Trying to do it straight never worked for anybody. And then add some more clips as you see fit. And then suddenly it sits up like it's meant to. All right. Put all my scissors back on my magnet. So I think I want to sew gusset side up. So the main panel side up, I just think it's going to be easier to do. I'm even going to hold my tails like I'm supposed to. I'm going to stitch a few, back stitch. Now I want this excess here facing downwards. As I get to the corner, I have a sneaking suspicion I just ran out of bobbin thread. I definitely did. I heard it go. Um, the more you sew, the more in tune you become with your machine. So you can hear when you run out of bobbin thread. And as annoying as it is, at least I caught it before I took all the clips out. Okay. So, I'm going to wind a bobbin and I'm going to do it on camera because I just am. So I've wound a little bit on where I can let it go. So I actually went and got myself this awesome little squirty bottle for the oil so that instead of trying to use a plunger, I can now just take the lid off and squirt some oil into the bobbin 
casing. Now I have done a video on this for those that want to see where I'm putting the oil. I only put a couple of drops. Um, so my machinist told me that every time I wind a bobbin, I should do this. So I do this like four or five times a day, but it's going to prolong my services. So make it longer between services. And it won't blow up my, my machine then. I never fully wind my bobbin. I only let them get about three quarters full. Uh, any fuller than that and I start to have issues. So totally full is not something that I do. Okay. And I also don't re-thread my whole machine. I tie an old thread to the new thread and pull it through. The only bit I thread is the parts that move because otherwise it gets tangled. I've played that game and you have to sit and um, either untangle it or get a knife to cut all the knots. Neither of which are fun, so I avoid it. So, I've got lots of tails going on here. I can see them all. So I'm just going to start off just like half an inch back from where I left off. So what that's going to do is it's going to... Um, reinforce those stitches so it doesn't come undone and so then we're just going to go around the curve you notice that my machine's a little bit quieter that's from the oil that I put in it and I'm also cleaning up my clips as I go And then back stitch. And so now it's starting to look a little bit like a bag, which is fun. So then to this edge, we want to do the same thing. So again, I'm going to find the center. like this and then I'm going to find the center of this now I usually advise not to use clips to find centers and clip things um, but because the waterproof canvas is quite thin you don't have to put a lot of pressure which means you're less likely to cut your finger which I have done several times in some of my older videos in fact okay so I'm going to join the notches and peg it now, with this waterproof canvas, it's waterproof, so you don't want to use pins. You definitely want to use, like, the pegs or clips or whatever you call them. Otherwise, you're going to put perforated holes, and then it's not waterproof. Not that this is 100% waterproof because of the stitching lines, uh, but you can put, um, like, silica or glue in that if you needed it 100% waterproof. But technically, we're stabbing holes into the fabric to join it. So the seams themselves are not waterproof, unless you make them waterproof. And I'm sure there's YouTube videos if you desperately needed 100% waterproof. I can see when particular instances would arise for that. This is probably not really one of them. This is waterproof enough. So nearly there, that's probably enough clips. So now I'm going to attach that one. So now we're starting to get like a picture of what's going on. No, I want this this way up. So again, I'm going to back stitch. My finger here actually just held those threads. Not that I thought that they would contract up, but you never know. And always try and stop with your needle down. Sometimes I have to manually crank it to down because I miss, but that's okay.
right. And then trim your tails. I can see a few I've missed. So now it kind of looks like this, but that's okay. It's meant to. Don't stress. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this on. So I just need to get a zipper. I've got a zip. I also have to go out to the horses before I continue this video. It's been a hectic morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it right sides out. And then I'm going to add the zip. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the zip all the way on and off one end and then put it back on again. And what that's going to do is make it so that my zipper head is not at the base so that I can leave a gap at the top in the middle. Uh, so first up, I'm going to try and do this without the zipper jig, uh, which I don't think is a thing today, mainly because I'm not concentrating enough and it's on an angle, which is always a little bit harder. All right, I think that's on. It is, fantastic. So we're gonna zip that on and then all the way off the end. And then I'm gonna put it back on again. And I know that seems counterproductive. I know it sounds crazy, but you just have to trust me occasionally. I know you don't know me, but you should just trust me on this. So now I'm going to put it on again. Exactly the same way. Uh, but instead of going all the way up, I'm going to go to this corner and then open it so that I've got a gap, but at the top, away from here. Now, just to make sure that nothing's going to um, disrupt my sewing, I'm actually just going to put a few tacking stitches over the zipper so that it won't come undone on me while I'm trying to put the base on. So I'm going to do both ends because I don't want the zipper to open. Okay. So now it's starting to look like a food bag. My handles are just long enough. I'm happy with my length, but like I said, I did shorten them. Um, I think to like about half. So now we're going to put our base on. But I'm not, I'm not happy with, I don't think I'm going to do it the same way that the pattern does. I think I'm going to do it my way. So my way, yeah, my way bit would be to bind the inside. But I've just realized that I've cut everything a different size. So my way may not work in this particular instance. So what you want to do is put the base on. My way still might work, but we'll, we'll continue with the patterns way for now. We'll see how we go. The pattern just requires a lot of hand stitching, which I was trying to mentally avoid. Um, because I don't really have time for hand stitching. And if I'm going to plan on making a lot of these, hand stitching an entire base is not practical. But... I reckon we could bind the inside. I'm just mentally thinking this out. But I will continue with the pattern as it says. Uh, and hand stitching will make the base look really nice because you're not going to see any joins on the inside. So I can definitely see how it has merit. It's going to look nicer. It's just a longer process to hand stitch the entire base in. We'll start with the outer one. As you can see, I'm just clipping the whole thing. And this is the side that we've basted together. So obviously all of that is going to be in the seam allowance, which is fine. So I'm going to put the base side down and I'm going to squish it down like this. And I'm going to stitch all the way around. So I'm going to back stitch in the corner. I'm 
going to move these out of the way as best as possible. And then to there. And then I'm going to pivot and go the other way. Now that's the edge that we've basted together. So we have to stitch the lining into this. Needle down and pivot. Also, we should have trimmed these tails because they're now annoying me. And I forgot to grab my uh, bin off camera. I've just started a pile of tails at the moment. Okay. So that is the base of the exterior on. Trim off the tails, add them to the pile. So with these corners, I'm just going to trim off some of that excess so that they're going to sit nicer. Because I want nice sitting corners, obviously. That makes sense. Alright, so now we can open this up further and turn it through. I like my extra heavy fusible non-woven stuff. That's going to sit really, really nicely. So, so far, this is what we've got. Now, another thing that you could do if you wanted to is have two zippers. So, this is what we've got so far. We're almost there. Uh, we just need to add the base in. So, what I'm thinking is, I'm going to turn it through. I just want to make sure that everything was correct and all my corners were nice. That's why I turned it the other way. hand stitch everything. I think that's excessive and unnecessary. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand stitch like a section. So I'm going to start with where the door is. And I'm calling it a door because it's, it is. It's a door. So what I want to do is I'm going to stitch that onto there. And then I might stitch the two sides and then leave this gap open and then hand stitch that bit shut so that I've got less hand stitching to do. And yes, I know it sounds lazy and it possibly is, but again, I don't love hand stitching and I just, I don't, I don't see me making lots of these if I hand, have to hand stitch the whole base every time. So I am going to hack it right now. So I'm starting where everything's basted because all the wrong sides are out. So I can just stitch this along here, like we did with the other side. I'm also going to zip this up a little bit so I don't get the zip. That's again why we're doing this side first. Straight along, like that. Because that's the part we're going to see, so that's not really where you want to be putting your hand stitching. Um, and I have to, where I stitched it, we can still see some of my stitches. So I'm now going to flip it over and just stitch like two stitch lengths further in, so that we're not going to see that. Um, and if you stitch it with this side on top, you can see your previous stitches, so you can do one stitch closer than the furthest inward stitch. I hope that made sense. tails. Alright, so now the inside is beautiful. So 
So now I'm going to do the opposite side. I know I said I was going to leave that side open, but I'm thinking I will leave one of the sides open instead of the back. So again, I'm going to grab some Wonder Clips and clip the back. I'm assuming that so many people asked me to do this pattern so that I would find a way to not hand stitch so much. I've had several people ask me will I do a video on this and I'm assuming this is why because you all want to see how to do it without hand stitching which is fair enough I get that all right let's stitch the back panel like so now because I know I have to hand stitch I'm not as worried about leaving a corner open as I normally would be so now we're going to come along and just pick one of the sides. It doesn't really matter which side. And I'm going to clip along here. Um, you'll notice that I am actually clipping, which is not something I normally do because this stuff can get a little bit slippery and I don't want it to move. Okay. So we're going to stitch this whole side. all the way along so that we completely seal it. Now this end is going to be a little bit tricky uh, because that was the end where the door is. And yes, I'm calling it door. It's just easier. Um, so things kind of started to get caught in the seam allowance. And then I'm just going to stitch from here to like a third of the way down. And then I'm going to leave all this gap to turn and then hand stitch it. So instead of having to hand stitch the whole bottom, I've only got, you know, a couple of inches. Which works out a lot nicer for me. Back stitch, trim your tails. I'm also going to trim the corners so that it's going to sit nicer when we turn it. Alright, let's see if my mental magic worked. So I'm just going to maneuver it through the hole. Now the bigger the hole that you leave, the easier it is to turn, but the more top, uh, hand stitching you need to do. So it's a bit of a balancing act, hand stitching versus turning. Which is why I only stitched approximately a third and not half, because I wanted that extra space. Because of all of the initial bright that I've put in it, it makes it a lot thicker. It's not as thick as foam, um, but it's just thicker. Insulated foam would be cool. I should look into that. Alright. So before I stitch this up, just to make sure that I've done it all right, what I'm going to do is push it inside the bag. So far so good, guys. Just so you know. So this is what we've got so far. So all I have to do now is pull out this little section here, which I've left towards the front to make it easier. And so I now only have to hand stitch here. So I'm going to tuck in the raw edges like I normally would. Uh, but the reason that we have to hand stitch is because of the zip. So I'm going to start at this end. Tuck under the raw edges and grab a wonder clip and clip it down. I'm going to go across the whole way. Now you could, you could probably machine stitch this, uh, but I feel like it's going to be super tricky right here. So I'm going to hand stitch it for that reason. I'm going to start at the other end because it's the easy end and work towards the hardest part. Tuck all of that in like so. I'm doing lots of clips just to hold it. So that's now what we've got. So now I need a hand stitching needle. Which flukishly was easy to find on my pin magnet. Uh, so this, for anybody that's never seen one of these, 
it's a magnetic pin board. Um, it's like a pin cushion, but it's a magnet. I love this because if you ever drop your needles, you can just hover over and it'll pick them all back up for you. Okay, so I want a blue that's going to closely match this blue, um, which for me looks like about this one. I know it's a bit brighter than it looks, but I don't have that exact colour. So I'm going to take an arm's length. I never take more than an arm's length because that's when you start getting knotted when it's too long. Um, and for stability purposes, I will be doubling over the thread. So I've threaded it through the needle. And then a lot of people ask me about my knot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop like this. And then I'm going to wind the tail part here five times. One, two, three, four, five. And you might wonder, oh, why am I doing five and not six? And the official answer is six becomes knotted before it all gets together. Uh, and so it doesn't work. So now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's my knot. And I've just got a bit of tail. So I'm going to leave probably one or two millimetres past the knot. Like uh, that. And now I can start hand stitching. So I'm going to start away from the zip and work my way towards the zipper end. So I'm going to take off my first clip. Now because this is waterproof canvas, I've pretty well um, creased it by putting all the clips in. So I, the first thing I do is I start from the inside and stitch my way out so that the knot will be hidden inside. And then we can just stitch back and forth along this seam line. So that's just like a normal stitch. Uh, if you were concerned, you could also go over and over and go the same way each time. Uh, that would be an acceptable stitch too. But what I'm going to try and do is an invisible stitch. So what you do is you, you tag the inside of the fabric. So because it's folded over, you only want to grab the inside layer of one side and then you cross over to the other. So from the outside, you're not going to see your stitches, but you're stitching the inside part close to where the fold is. So we're just doing like really, really small zigzags. So I do three or four and then pull the thread like that. So you don't see my stitches, but they are they're holding everything together. So you want to do it just before the crease. You don't want to do it too far down or you'll have like a weird flap. So you want to do it really close to that top fold that you've done. And you just want to try and grab the inside piece of fabric so that your stitches are barely seen. Um, you don't have to do this. You can just go back to like normal stitching if you want to. This is just one of those you know, more advanced things to do, I guess. And I'm just doing very, very, very small zigzags and removing my wonder clips as I go. Don't be worried if you can only do one side at a time. I've just had a lot of practice at this uh, because this is how I hand stitch everything. If I have to hand stitch, I prefer that I don't see it. And so I'm just working my way down the gap, trying to do the inside as much as possible. I have got a couple of stitches that have come all the way through and to be honest, I'm genuinely not worried. Uh, because it's still looking neat. And neat is the main kind of mission here. Doesn't matter if you can see the stitches or not. We care more about neat than anything. So if your neatest is being seen, do that. And again, I've got fake nails so that I can use them like a thimble and push the needle through. So I can get more stitches than if I didn't have the fake nails. Now I've got a tail from yellow I need to trim there. And so then we just want to do this last section. So I've got plenty of thread. I deliberately cut more than I thought I needed, which is why I did my whole arm length. Because when I double it over, it's only half my arm length. So it's less likely to get knotted because it's not as long.
You can also, um, because that's getting harder for me, I'm actually just going to stitch, instead of zigzagging now, I'm just going to stitch kind of one at a time. Alright, so I just want to make sure I'm covering that zipper so I don't see it and then stitching along. Now you could potentially do this uh, with a sewing machine and just top stitch it but if you're going to do that, leave the gap on the back wall uh, because the zipper would make it pretty impossible to stitch over it and get nice and close without wrecking your zip. So that's why I decided to hand stitch. Um, if I had have listened to my original plan and left the gap in the back, I could have just top stitched over it and we'd be done. But it's fine. I'm happy with my decision. This is looking good. So now I'm just making sure that all of those raw edges are tucked under because I'm really close to the edge of the zipper now. Okay, look at me go. So now I'm just going to tie off. So how I tie off is I stab the needle through and then again I'm going to wind the... Oops. No, I'm not. I'm going to pull it out. So I'm going to stab my needle through just a little piece of fabric and then wind five times. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got my finger up against it so that the twists stay. And then what I want to try and do is keep all that thread as close to the fabric as possible and then pull the needle and the rest of the thread through the five loops, creating a knot. And then you can just chop it off. And then, we zip it up. Oh, unless you want to see. You can barely see where I've stitched. Zip it up. Bob's your uncle. So I only did uh, smaller handles, so if you wanted it longer, you could definitely do that. But I'm I'm quite happy with how that come out. That is super cute. That is a really cool gift for Christmas too. Um, so I hope that was helpful, guys. Um, feel free to um, join my group and show me if you make one, or tell me how you changed it, or where you left your gap, if it was easier or harder than mine. Um, and yeah. Oh, I know I always forget this, but you need to like and subscribe the video apparently it helps i'm not sure how i don't really understand the youtube analytics but yeah subscribe and like the video all right bye guys